just amazing that people are that good. I just had my neighbor come out. Nice young man, lives next door to me, has for years. But anyways, he walks out and he says, uh, uh, that's just plain lazy to drive your truck all the way out to the mailbox like that rather than walking. I guess you're going to back up into the driveway now and go back inside with your mail, huh? He was real sweet about it, but it had kind of an impact, what he said, you know. No, he was real nice about it, but it's just kind of interesting that, you know, we need neighbors to point out our fallacies like that. I told him, no, I wasn't going to back back up. I'm going to go for a little drive now that I'm out here and got caught at it. It'll look better to the neighbors. You know. So, I got it covered. I'll go for a drive. I don't care. I got my mail. I'm driving around here. I told my neighbor I would. I'm driving around. Actually, I got a couple of errands to run anyway, so it, it's kind of what I had in mind, you know. Drive my truck all the way out to get the mail. It's not even raining or nothing. It's a beautiful day in Oregon. 47 beautiful degrees. 1.49 p.m. in the afternoon. All is well. I know what I'm doing. More or less. I depend on God for most things, but I don't tell everybody that. Well, here we got a little bit of a dilemma. We got a green light, but nowhere to go with it. I think we're going to get a little bit of a shot at it here. Okay, so human beings being what they are, are capable of a certain amount of cooperation in a situation where they'd lose if they didn't. This here is your bookstore. There's a couple people in there. I see three people at least. Four or five. There's a bunch of people in the bookstore today. That's encouraging to me. I like to, I like to think of people in, increasing their uh, domain, shall we say. Only trouble is, you can you can go the wrong way or the right way when you start into reading somebody else's thoughts. Depends on what they were thinking when they wrote the book. That's something about the Bible that's kind of interesting. You know, it was written 66 different books over like a 1500 year period of time, all orchestrated by the God who created men for the purpose of men to be able to. Uh, know enough about God to succeed at spending eternity with him in paradise. That's pretty nice of God, you know? I don't think I've ever done anything to deserve that much attention. Some people don't think God wrote the Bible. I think if he can create the whole universe with the stars and suns and planets and everything else, and all that just plain old space that we can't even quite wrap our minds around how much of it there is. Like I said, and everything else, life and the sense of self that I possess as a creation of His, and the ability to love rather than eat or, uh, you know, whatever uh, predators do. Um, why, I think maybe if he, God can do all that, create all that, he, he could probably write a book. Well, let's see. There's nothing else around here to look at. Just some tractors and stuff. That green light that's been waiting for me to go for some time now. A couple of kids on bikes. They don't deserve to be on YouTube any more than she does. Enjoying myself on this beautiful day. Now it's up to 51 degrees. Let's go swimming or something. A couple days ago we had lakes forming in the downtown roads. We could have swam just about anywhere. Path up there. There's a path all over the place around here where you can ride your bike or wear out a pair of tennis shoes if you want to run around. 
it's actually a pretty nice place to live. I give it less credit than it's due for quality of life. I've been to California though a couple times and it's nice, you know. What I noticed about California was that pretty soon, I mean, it was nice. You enjoy the consistency of the weather and the niceness of it, but after a while, you get up in the same thing every day and you, and you sort of start thinking in the back of your mind about how you, you're you sort of getting bored with the weather because it's always the same. Now, I would rather be bored with sunshine than bored with rain. I'm not saying that. I'm not that far gone, but I do like a little bit of a change in the weather once in a while too, I think, you know. I'm going to back this truck in so it's easier to drive it out than it was to get it in. Does that make any sense at all? We don't spend a lot of time on it. I really don't care whether it does or not. I'm doing it anyways. I think I'll move over that way a little bit though. I can hardly give this guy room to get into his car, right? Even though the lines are elsewhere. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's what I always say. No, it's not. That's what God says. That's the second commandment. The first one was, Thou shalt not smoke cigarettes in public. If you're the under, under the age of 400. No, that's not right. It was, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Whoo boy, that's gonna keep us busy for the rest of the day, I'll tell you that much right now. Here we go, Albertsons. Almond Roca cookies. One of the things that bothers me a little bit about being alive in 2011 is that, uh, you know, it's just a personal observation. I'm not saying it's, you know, applies to every human being on the planet or anything like that but it just seems like a lot of us these days put more emphasis on convincing other people that we're smart than we do on convincing them that we're nice that's not exactly an unselfish approach to sharing the planet with other people when i think it through it doesn't come out that way if I succeed at convincing everybody I meet and people that I don't do indirectly or something that, that I'm somehow smart, why that reflects on me. But if I convince people that I'm nice, they'll just start wondering why. What does he want, you know? Or maybe they'll get to the point where they say, what makes him different than the rest of us. Why is he nice? And if I could tie that in to the fact that God has been trying to teach me to love people since I first met him and give him the credit for uh, the niceness, actually, the love, maybe that would be kind of what I'm supposed to do with my life or something like that, you think? This here is the church. That's the church. I guess there's nobody here today. What do you think? Well, I did see one vehicle over there belonging to one of the pastors here. So I'm guessing that Pastor Luis is on the premises. There's ducks on the pond down there. Can you see that? them ducks. I'm a little worried about how they're all coming over this way. Is this some kind of an attack? A quack attack? He's not afraid of me. Either that or he didn't see me or he's just too dumb to care. He's the alpha male quack. He's required to stand up while everybody else hides in the bushes. I don't know. I certainly haven't got time with my one life here on this earth to get into the 
politics of duck gatherings. There's Pastor Luis's truck, so I figure he's here. I do see some broken pieces of concrete where there used to be a curb. Should I go in here and see what Pastor Luis is doing? I think I should. I don't know why, I just feel like I want to. You know how many people we have here yesterday? How many? I think it was over 300. You're kidding. No, I was embarrassed that we prepared some tamales for about 200 people. I feel so bad because they couldn't fit all in the FLC. The service was for Thanksgiving. We bring some fruit and put on tables at front and sing songs and or pray for those blessings because you know that fruit represents the blessings from the Lord. I want to make something like people can see it. I say, you know, this fruit represents what God, you know, but God's, God's giving you so much, but... He blessed you with more people than food. Pastor Luis and I were talking about because he is a, a man that I enjoy talking about the Lord with. There is great value in the conversations that we have with each other about our Lord. What a beautiful day. There's the cops pulling somebody over. There's me putting somebody the cops pulled over on YouTube. There ought to be a law against stuff like this, you know what? I truly love Pastor Luis Garcia. I enjoy meeting with him. I don't know if y'all heard that on the recording or not. I'll tell you what, I, what he told me a little bit. They just had a Thanksgiving service and uh, a little time of uh, socializing with some uh, refreshments afterwards. I mean, and he tried to make a little bit of a meal out of it because it was Thanksgiving. And he ended up with 300 people. 300 people. From all different churches and neighborhoods and everything. People bringing family members to their Thanksgiving dinner at church that, that don't believe in God even. And they came. I will continue to pray for the Latino church and Pastor Luis Garcia's ministry there. How wonderful. We discussed his daughter. She just went, Melissa just went with George Scott to Tijuana on a little mission down there. I guess it opened her eyes to the, a part of the world where people have very little in terms of possessions and even food and, and normal needs, you know. But they have contentment all the while and she uh, was taken aback uh, spiritually by that I am so blessed with everything I need I heard an elephant made out of a tree there look at that he's friendly he just don't say much